okay, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Uh, I would like to introduce my name. Uh, I am Mursid Rizusulo from Universitas Negeri Semarang, and our team uh, are Arif Rahmat Kurnia, Fikriatun Naima, Muhammad Fadlil, Fatih Hunaja, and Anissa Wahyu Hidayah. I would like to share our uh, research about feeding pattern of under five children during COVID-19 pandemic. So let's begin from the background. The world was shocked by COVID-19 coronavirus disease 19 pandemic at the end of 2019. The virus attacked the average person aged 49 years, while few cases were found in under five children. It was very important for under five to get food, risk of nutrition to boost immune system in preventing COVID-19 infection. So the pandemic threatens normal life, forcing parents and caregivers to adapt in terms of feeding pattern. So we know that this COVID pandemic make us to be adapted from the situation. We, we should buy uh, food, uh, not directly, we should uh, gather information from the online systems like uh, uh, online food. So maybe this uh, condition makes, makes us to be adept. So uh, our study objective is to obtain a clearer description related to feeding pattern in under five children before and during COVID-19 pandemic. So our method using a cross-section of study design, consecutive sampling, uh, and the respondent are mothers or caregivers who take care of under five children. We use online questionnaires because this pandemic situation uh, make us to be adept using online systems. And then we use statistical data analysis using SPSS software. And our result and discussions, uh, the subject characteristics, there were 83 respondents participated in this study. 78 respondents filled out the online questionnaires completely while five of them were incomplete, so we make it out. The median age of children was 19 uh, months old. Uh, this is the minimum and maximum is 59 months old. This is the table of subject characteristics. Uh, our respondents come from uh, four islands in Indonesia. We have Zefa, uh, 84.6%, and we have Sumatra, Kalimantan, and Sulawesi. So the majority of our respondent is coming from Zefa. The family income before entering pandemic, more than half of family income was declined. The average family income before COVID-19 pandemics was for from 3,000 uh, 3 million Indonesian dollar Indonesian rupiah declined to be 2 million Indonesian uh, rupiah during pandemic. So these declines maybe have a effect from the nutrition aspect. The further education. Most fathers were well educated. It saw that most, uh, most of them are undergraduate or higher education. With, with this, 61.5%. Uh, and the further occupation, there was an issue to be unemployed, especially private employee who changed to be unemployed or to be a farmer or to be a trader. So the private employee changes to be unemployed. This is the issue. So it maybe has a problem. The mother educations uh, were also well educated. And then uh, most of mother occupation were housewife. Yeah. However, there was not much change in mother occupations before and during pandemic. And about nutritional status of mother during pandemics, 
most of mother had normal nutritional status. However, there were still mother with underweight, overweight, or even obese. And then uh, gender is uh, evenly distributed. 50% male and 50% female. The category of age children, uh, we, we divided to be three categories. So uh, almost half of them were six to 23 months old. Almost all children were six until 23 months old from the uh, red colors. And then breastfeeding frequency was consistent among subjects. So, uh, so many breastfeeding frequency is consistent. There are not decline or increase. And our bivariate analysis uh, showed that there was no difference in inclusive breastfeeding practice before and during pandemic COVID-19. And also about the breastfeeding difficulties, most of mother did not experience the difficulties in breastfeed their children before and during pandemics. We can see the table, the p-value using a McNamara test, it saw that this is not significant. And about the behavior, to breastfeed, uh, which is using both breasts, almost all of mother keep practicing breastfeed using both breasts before and during pandemic. So this behavior, which is a good behavior, is still uh, the same before and during pandemic. And about the food availability in a day, uh, we try to determine what's happened the food availability in a day maybe uh, our perception will see that maybe there's problem but the our data show that foods foods were foods were availability among subject uh, it caused by well educated and good family income so uh, majority there is no problem for food availability in a family. So uh, we have a conclusion about those data. The exclusive breastfeeding practice was not changed and uh, mothers did not experience difficulties in breastfeeding. Another conclusion is uh, keep practicing breastfeed using both breasts is still common among mothers. And the last conclusions, foods were available, available among family. So uh, from this conclusion, we can have advice that uh, there are uh, so many reasons for people to be panicked. But our conclusion show that um, the data show us that there is no really a big issue before and uh, during COVID-19 pandemics. Maybe from this conclusion, we can uh, have a new knowledge that uh, even though COVID-19 pandemics, we can uh, keep uh, to achieve the nutritional uh, achievement. So uh, there are no reasons to be panicked because uh, our data shows that uh, there is not a, a big problem to facing this pandemic. Thank you very much. I think this is the final conclusion from us. Thank you for sailing with me and I would like to uh, have an answer uh, and questions or maybe we can share more information about nutrition and COVID-19 pandemics. Thank you very much.